Uh, this is a tutorial to help us navigate uh, through Canvas and find out where the home page for our class is and also the syllabus, okay? So I'm assuming that you know how to get to here, you're watching this video, but for those of you that don't know how this works, you, you go to the Miramar College website, you go to Canvas, and then you have to log in. Okay, so go ahead and log in, and then your uh, dashboard will come up. So don't be confused by what you see here. This is an instructor view. I'm not showing you the student view yet because I don't have enough posted yet. So it doesn't matter. It looks similar to this. Uh, you don't have published or unpublished, but published for me just means that was my spring classes that just ended. And now unpublished are my two summer classes uh, that, that I haven't published yet. But by the time you're reading this, you, you will. So in, for, for your purpose, just open the dashboard open canvas it opens to your dashboard and choose the class you want if, if this is the only class you've got that's going to be the only one that'll be there so we are 32632 is 3110 so click on that and that takes us to our home page so i want to just talk to you quickly about what this uh you know is doing for you so obviously you the crn's 32632 summer session 2020 i'm frank turner uh, most importantly, here is the link to the syllabus. It's always here. It'll be here the entire class. Anytime you want to look at the syllabus, go to home and click home and boom, there it is. Uh, this is a fully online course, no classroom as we know. Um, instructions will be provided to you each step of the way to help you succeed. There's my Miramar email. Uh, any questions ever, uh, let me know. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm approachable and accessible. If you have an issue, let me know. I'll, I'll help you through it. Okay, um, we will go over the syllabus and the class requirements first day class by video. That's what we're doing right here. Uh, these will be provided to you for instruction each week. So the the way you get to what is is um, you know um, assigned that week is you go to modules. Okay, so it says simply go to module section found in the menu on the left side of this page, <clears throat> and that is right here. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go there in a little bit, but just so you know it's up here. Okay, and we're gonna go into detail about what modules are. <clears throat> okay, so there's um, a couple of other ways for you to see what's what's relevant in the class as far as assignments and due dates and so on. One is the course summary, which is right here, and this takes you through every you know important date, first day of class, drop deadlines instructions, posting, due dates, and so on. Everything's right here on the home page also, okay? I am gonna to go to the student view for one second here. So this is what you will see. You're seeing a lot more from my view than what you'll have, so that's actually nice for you. But one thing that I can't, I don't have that you have is, is, is called to do. So this is another way for you to look at a glance and see what's relevant, what's coming due. So it, it, it tells you, you know, days ahead of time that these are these are coming due in chronological order. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the student view because like I said, there's not enough posted yet for us to see without being in my view. Okay. Okay, so okay, so you've got the you've got modules, you've got the course summary, you've got your to-do list, and then you have the calendar. Calendars in this far left menu. Um, so once you click on that far left menu, it takes you out of the course. It's not a big deal. You can get back in pretty easy, but just so you understand, okay? Make sure you click the class uh, that is pertinent for what you're trying to do. So th th these are my two summer classes. So that would be my, my calendar for both classes. Um, if I didn't want to have my other class in there, I just click them out. And now it's just our class. So this this goes through you know each month, June fifteenth, first day of class, drop deadline with no record, instructions for film reflections, posting. There's a quiz on the California state requirement. All these things are of course a part of assignments that we'll talk about what they are here in a minute. Uh, of course, go to July and the, the uh, uh, calendar continues through August, and of course we're we're finished August eighth. Okay. Go back to the course homepage, just go to courses or, or uh, dashboard and just choose the course you want, 32632, and hey, we're back. Okay, modules, course summary, to-do list, calendar. More than a, enough ways to know what's going on in the class. So people tell me, I didn't know that there was an assignment due. If, if you're going to tell me that, you're, you're telling me that you're not really paying attention, okay? There's plenty of, of ways to know what's going on. I just gave you four of them, okay? 
Okay, let's go. So we're going to go over the syllabus in a minute. I just want to go through all these all these here so you know what they are. Okay, so announcements. There's, there hasn't been an announcement yet, but this is where I will post announcements. And there'll be, you know, quite a few of these throughout the class. Perhaps, perhaps not. Just depends. Um, so this is where they will be. Um, okay, modules, modules, I told you, is, is this, is, this is probably the most important part. So here you are with week one through it says 16 years i'm still working on it but or 17 but it'll be reduced to eight so i want you to see this so you know this is how it works you you every week you come to week one week two and you simply click on that week and there's your there's your 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 assignment for the week so just just for fun let's look at one this is not our class this is from a different class but the same format to use you see the week that uh we're in but of course we're not in february the chapter we're going to do, and then you have class one. And every week I do a, oops, I do what's called the welcome video, where I'm actually, you know, you see me, so you can actually see that I'm alive and a real person. Then we go through the uh, chapter uh, video lectures as well as films for each chapter. So as you go through the video lecture, I'll I'll say, okay, please stop and watch the film called Westward Expansion right here. Go ahead and watch that, and then you come back, okay? Uh, Class two keeps going, video lectures and so on. And this is a fast track class, eight weeks. So you're going to have four classes a week, not two. It's double time. So and so what you're seeing here is one week of work in a 16-week class, but yours will be double. Okay, so understand what you signed up for. Eight week eight week class goes by quick, but you can also get it out of the way uh, uh, soon. Okay. So modules is where you go for that. And we're going to start with week one. And of course, week one, again, this is not your class, but, you know, introductions, uh, you know, talking about the class, uh, things like, you know, how I run a class, syllabus, that's what I'm doing right now. What's definition assignment? What's film reflection? Uh, a discussion board is not relevant for this class. We're not, we don't have time to do those. So we're not doing those. What is a supplemental lecture? Okay, all, all of those will be will be available to you um, in, in the modules. So anytime, um, I'm, I'm sorry, let me do one more thing here, where it says, um, okay, all, all these here, I, I'm, I'm going to title it uh, assignment instructions. And that, that's where you can always come and see def, what a definition assignment is, what a film reflection is, what a supplemental lecture is. Okay, that's, you can always come to modules week one to find uh, explicit instructions about what an assignment's about, okay? Assignments, and this is all the assignments uh, for this class. And these are correct, these have been posted, but you haven't seen it yet because I haven't published this class. Once the class is published, you'll start to see them in your to-do list. And you see it's broken down to eight weeks. So you see here a couple of times, we've got three chapters in one week. So that's a, that's a lot um, to understand that, you know, um, that's that's a fair amount to do for for definition assignments, uh, but again, that's that's what you signed up for. It's an eight week class. You're gonna have eight transmissions of um, I believe it's 17 uh, chapters. Okay, so pretty much all of them, but the last one is at least two. Some are three. Okay, so you have that every week. They're always due Sunday nights. Please read the instructions in modules week one about what's the definition assignment. Film reflections, same thing. If you want to know what a film reflection is, please go to, again, modules week one. What's a film reflection? Read the guidelines and the and the instructions and so on. So you're going to have four of these. Uh, they typically post on a Friday, and then you have 11 full days before it's due on, on a, the week from the next Monday, with, with the exception of... And I'm going to talk about this in the syllabus again. The first one's a, a little faster. We don't have time, enough time to get them all in. So film reflection number one is posting on the first day of Monday, not the previous Friday. So you're losing a few days in the first one. So understand that. The first one is seven full days. Still plenty of time to watch a video and write a short paper. The rest of them will, will be uh, 11 days, okay? Uh, Quiz California State requirement. This is a requirement by the state that in this class of 110, I need to teach one class in the California Constitution and government. So I will give you a short lecture and then you will take a five question quiz, uh, not designed to be extremely challenging. If you, if you take, um, you know, um, 
notes, uh, not extremely detailed notes. Just just hit the main points. You'll be fine. Okay. So it's, it's just a, it's a requirement that we have to do. Uh, so that will be um, on uh, uh, for, open for a couple of days in, at the end of June. Midterm and final, both the same as far as there's part one, part two. Each one, each each assignment's got it. Part one is multiple choice, 40 questions in 40 minutes. Multiple choice questions, that's more than enough time. A typical face-to-face -face classroom, they get these done in 20 to 30 minutes. Um, part two is essays. So you don't know what a supplemental lecture is yet, but you will find out. And they are based, essays are based on those. You'll be writing three essays um, for part two. You have 75 minutes to finish that. And the final is the same, the same format, okay? So not not an extreme amount of, of assignments. You know, don't don't believe them when they say that you don't lose content in, in an eight-week course. You, you are here because we would do four discussion boards also, but we just can't get it all in. Okay. Okay, so what's next? Uh, discussions. So we're not doing discussion boards. There really is nothing to do here. However, it is here for you. It's a community for you and students to communicate with each other if you'd like to. Someone has a question, um, you know, uh, reach out to somebody for whatever the reason is. This is a place to do it. Uh, grades, I'm not going to click on because it shows everybody's name, and I don't want to do that for privacy. But in in the student view, in your view, when you hit grades, it'll just show you your grades. Okay. Uh, of course, you need to stay on top of that so you know what your grade in the class is and make sure that it's correct. Uh, people is everybody in the class and how to contact them. Again, I won't open it for that same privacy reason, but you'll see when you open it, everyone in the class is available. If you want to reach out to somebody, you can, okay? Uh, all, all the rest of these are disabled because I don't use them, okay? And they don't, they're not pertinent to you anyway. Settings is also not pertinent to you. That's that's pertinent to me. So all you're going to see is, is from people up, okay? Announcements has got that slash because I haven't posted one. Once I post one, that 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 uh, slash uh, whatever you call that will will go away. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Let's go back to our home page. Uh, we talked about that. The four ways to figure out what's going on. Uh, we talked about announcements, modules. Very important. Modules is where the whole thing whole thing runs. Assignments. We looked at discussions, grades, people. Okay. Let's go on to the syllabus. Let's go ahead and open that. One of these days it'll come up. Okay, here we go. This is our syllabus for this class. Um, so history 110, our CRN is 32632. My name is Frank Turner. This is an online class, no classroom. It's also fast track, a 16-week class compressed into eight weeks. So that's understand that this is double time, and it's it's a lot. Uh, so be aware that the workload is 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 pretty heavy in this class. Uh, our dates of our class is June 15th through August 8th. There's my email. Uh, Office, I'm available through Skype, FaceTime, or Zoom. Honestly, Zoom is probably the best way to do it. If you want to talk to me personally and see me have a have a private conversation, we can have online. We can do that. <clears throat> Just let me know, <clears throat> and I will send you an invitation and a time to to do that, and we can talk face to face. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the class description. Please please read all this. I'm not going to go into all of this. Uh, please read this so you know what we're talking about. We're looking at the post Civil War era up into the modern, our modern time. Uh, <clears throat> the course will pay special attention to the interaction between the different races that were involved in the story and the conflicts. The story is not one-sided. It's been taught that way for many decades. Uh, special attention will be given in this class to include the histories of African Americans, Native Americans, Mexican Americans, and women. My background is the study of racism and discrimination, as well as the history of civil rights and social justice. So my lectures and presentations will be given from this point of view. And so that's kind of the theme of the class. And it, it's pretty hard to, to not have that be your theme anyway. The history is about, is about race, whether we want to admit it or not. We're, we're all being forced to you know, look, look at some raw truths when we look at our, at our community and our society and culture 
you know, out in the streets, uh, you know, uh, protesting and, and violence. So, you know, it, it's, it's about truth here and um, not holding any punches. And it, it's, uh, it's a, you know, there's a lot to be said that perhaps you haven't learned. So hopefully you'll come away from, with this class with a better understanding of, of why we have such racial strife in America and perhaps uh, a, a, an idea of how to end that. Okay, student learning outcomes. Uh, this is what the campus requires me to teach to you. So this is what the, they expect me to teach you. So please read these. It's only five there. Um, this is a kind of an overview of you know what what you be what you'll be learning in this class. Uh, and then uh, please please read all. I'm not going to spend you know all, all, all the time here. But please read all this word for word. Um, uh, class descriptions and so on, okay? Okay, moving on. Uh, next is our textbook. Uh, here's the here's the here's uh, an image of the book. There's the ISBN, the name. Make sure you get the eighth edition, volume two. There's a newer edition, and I, I don't get it because it's expensive, and I don't think that, that there's that much added to it. Uh, honestly, the, the only thing that's missing is mostly... Um, the you know the the country since Donald Trump and we talk a lot about that anyway so we're not really missing that okay so I'm trying to save you some money and make it easier for everybody uh, our CRN number if you go to the student store is three two six three two however uh, student stores are are um, making some big money on these textbooks and I I don't know how it's possible that a used textbook can be over a hundred dollars but uh, please, and I know I know that many of you are aware of this, but if you're not, you can rent this book through various sources online. Amazon, Chegg, just just search Chegg.com and up it comes, and you can rent these books for less than $20. Uh, you, you, you rent them, uh, you pay them the one-time fee of $20, and they send you a return postage label. You send it back at the end of the class, okay? Uh, so please, uh, and but also you can look on on Craigslist locally. You know, students that have this class in the spring are selling these books. But online, eBayHalf.com, and there's a whole bunch of others. That there's always a new sales site popping up somewhere. Whatever your favorite go-to source is, try all those because you'll find that you can get this book much much cheaper than the bookstore sells it for. Okay, that's this is the only textbook required for the course. Okay, attendance. Uh, obviously, this is an online class. There's no attendance requirement. However, a lack of engagement with materials or a failure to turn in assignments, especially early, may result in a student being dropped from the course. Uh, the, the policy at Miramar, after the first week, uh, it's the student's responsibility to drop the course. Um, as an instructor, I have the ability to drop people in the first week or perhaps a little longer than that, and that's called the the there's a census date that they call it, where I have to submit to the school that my final approved roster. Not that you can't drop after that, but that's that's how that works. Okay, so I have the ability to drop anybody in that time frame. In, in an online class, it doesn't happen very much because I don't see that you're not here. Okay, so understand that if you if you have uh, registered for this class and you're on the roster. And you're getting these emails. You're you're getting all this information from me. You're still in the class. So if you don't want to be in the class, drop the course. Please please do because there's there's a full waiting list of people wanting to get in this class. So except for the first week, after the first week, it's your responsibility to drop the course. I will not drop you. There's two deadlines. June 23rd. That's a week and one day from the day the class starts. Drop by that date without this class being entered in your transcripts. Your transcripts won't show any evidence that you ever had that class. This class. However, if you if you go past that date and you get to July 17th, and I I believe that's that's past the midterm. It's right around there. By the by by mid class, you you'll know that may, maybe you're just way behind because you're busy. Maybe you haven't been putting in the effort. Whatever, whatever your reason is, you don't have to justify it to me. You have till July 17th to drop this class and get a W on your transcript. So, so it will be on your transcripts, but a W is way better than an F or a D or even a C in some cases. If you want to go into grad school, you can't be getting a lot of Cs on your transcripts. You need to have a B average or higher, okay, like 3.5 or higher, and that's completely doable. 
So don't don't get don't get stuck in getting an F in a class that you, that you forgot to drop. It will drop your GPA. Uh, a W is not so bad unless you've got a whole bunch of them. Uh, you know, one or two is not a big deal. Um, people understand that it's, things happen. But you know, if you have like 10 or 12, that that might be a you know a, a pattern. This person this person doesn't finish what they start. Okay. Okay. So understand that. Students who remain enrolled in the class beyond, especially that second date, will receive a letter of grade. So if you stop doing work in, after week six and you don't drop the class, all those assignments come due. You're getting you're getting an F, and your your final grade will be an F. So don't don't make that mistake. Okay. So I put it in red there one more time. It's the student's responsibility to drop all classes in which he or she is no longer attending. Uh, be prepared to do well in this overall course. You need to complete all the readings, complete any assignments, uh, have any questions from the lectures, reading assignments for me, have all the needed materials. Assignments, and this is, of course, um, the nuts and bolts of what we're doing. So I'm going to go over this uh, briefly. And I say that because, again, go to modules week one, scroll down to assignment instructions, and look at the videos there. I, I, I do a video tutorial for each of these assignments and go into detail about what they are. I then give you written instructions and some have, have other documents associated with them, examples and so on. So I'm just gonna briefly talk about what these are. For details, please go to modules week one. So the definition assignments is the first one here. As we finish discussing each chapter, it will be, it will be required of you to submit an assignment through Canvas based on the key concepts and events and key people found in the terms to know section of your textbook found at the end of each chapter. So as you finish a chapter, the, the last part you'll read is called the summary, which summarizes the chapter. Then it'll say, chapter review and the first uh, section is is called terms to know and there's two there's two sections key concepts and events is two columns and typically you know 20 or so or perhaps even more uh, terms and then key people on the right side of the page in that in that same area right a, a much a shorter maybe five to eight people um, that's what i'm talking about so Regarding key concepts and events, what I want you to do is, is define these. I want you to define them in the order given. Don't alphabetize them. Don't change them around. Don't mix them up because I, when I grade these, I, I'm scanning them quickly and I know the order by now. And I, I've got hundreds of students that I don't have time to stop and, and dig around your list to find, make sure each one's there. Okay, so please do it that way. So what all, all this really is, if, if, if uh, when, when you're reading the chapter, um, there's certain words that are in bold print. If it's in bold print, that means it's a key term. Uh, that means that it'll be, it'll be in that list at the end of the chapter in the terms to know. That means that it'll also be in the glossary. So what I want you to do, I want you to simply define each concept and event as found in the glossary of your book. Uh, so what I'm saying is use the book to define it, not, not the internet, not, in a, not a dictionary, not an encyclopedia, not anywhere else. Why? Because some of these terms are ambiguous and different people might define them different ways. I want you to learn what, your, what the author of our book's definition is, because that's where the questions will come from for your midterm and finals. So please go to the glossary. It is, it is perfectly okay to write the definition word for word. I almost prefer you do that so you learn the author's definition. And the process of typing it out or writing it out will put it in your head, okay? Um, instructions will be, oh, I'm sorry, key, so key people are a little different. Uh, they are not in the glossary. I mean, they're, they're people. They, they are, um, it might be, in, might be in the book more than one time. Uh, so with key people, you don't go to the glossary, but right next to the, the, the list, the name of the key person, there's a page number. <clears throat> go to that page number and tell me what that person did on that page that was that was relevant. OK, so understand many people have are in a lot of different chapters. Let's just say for fun, Abraham Lincoln might be in five chapters. So if Abraham Lincoln's on your, um, you know, chapter 17 uh, list. Don't tell me what he did in chapter 20 or, or chapter 14. 
stay with the with the chapter that you're in. So make sure you go to the chapter, the page number given in the book. Okay, uh, that that can kind of you know catch people. The the other thing about these terms, you, you can you can define them as simply or as in detail as you'd like. What this really is, and what this assignment assignment came where it came from is you are developing a study guide for this class each time you do one of these chapters you should keep it separately so you can scan these and learn these as you go and when the midterm comes you'll have you'll have all uh seven or eight chapters whatever 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 it is ready to study from same thing with with the final so it's it, it really is for you um, so, so for an example, um, when I say as little or as much as you want, sometimes the definitions are long and involved, and perhaps you don't, you don't need to have all of that. But the other side of that is sometimes people will say, let's just say for fun, let's go back to Abraham Lincoln, and there's Abraham Lincoln as a term, and you know, on that on that page number, he's signing the Emancipation Proclamation. So that that's what it, that's what the question will be about. Uh, you know, I'll ask you questions about the Emancipation Proclamation if Lincoln's in that chapter uh, as a key person. But people will people will put on their definition assignment Abraham Lincoln, and the definition is a president. Well, yeah, that's that's correct. You're right, uh, but that's not going to help you as a study guy when you start to study and you look at the, Abraham Lincoln was a president. Ulysses Grant was a soldier, and Jefferson Davis was the Confederate president, and you know, on, on and on. Um, uh, Emmett Till was a young boy from Chicago. And there's much more than that. So if you're going to write your definitions that way, I'll accept it as an assignment, give you full points because you're doing, you're, you're doing the assignment. But understand, the more that you put into it, the more work you put into it, effort, it will help you in the long run. Because I'm not going to ask you a question, was Abraham Lincoln a president? I'm not going to ask you that, okay? I'm not going to, if I talk about Ulysses S. Grant, I'm not going to say, was he a soldier? You know, I'm going to ask you about his corrupt presidency, because that's that's deeper. So understand that. People just want to blaze through these assignments, and they miss the point. It's, it's, this is, I, I know it's similar to a, a vocabulary uh, assignment in the 10th grade. <laughs> It's similar to that, but it's much bigger because all these terms are what you're going to be uh, tested on in your <clears throat> multiple choice, okay? And understand that they're they're given to you in chronological order. So do them in chronological order. Don't mix them up. Don't alphabetize them. Um, because here here's a hint about how to read a book, how to study a, uh, a textbook, especially a social science textbook. Don't read the chapter at all until you define the terms. Define the terms first, even if you have no idea what they mean. The process of defining the terms will familiarize yourself with, with the terms and how they fit together. So when you if you do that first, then you read the book, it, it will read much easier, much faster, and you might even find that you in, enjoy it, okay? Um, we are a fast track class, so we've got um, two and sometimes three of these do each week. <clears throat> so please, I don't need two or three documents. <clears throat> Just open one document and and do chapter, you know, <clears throat> for for example, chapter 18 first. Do do terms, you know, key concepts and terms first, then key people. Keep going on the same document, go to the next chapter. Uh, whatever that what, what did I say chapter four whatever the chapter I said chapter 14 do do it do, do both parts of it stay in the same document do chapter 15 stay in the same document do chapter 16 I don't want to have to be opening three documents a hundred times to to grade these okay one document for all the chapters whether it's one two or three okay oh okay <clears throat> Film reflections. There will only be four of these: two before the midterm, two before the final. And understand that in this class, because it's it starts so quickly, it's only eight weeks. There's already one that's that's been posted. So go to film reflection number one and 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 look at the videos and read the instructions. Uh, what these are 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 your uh, th these are designed to gain your sense of interpretation of the media and the representations of American history. These are reflection papers. This, this is your personal and emotional reaction to a film that you see. Again, go to modules week one, scroll down to assignment instructions, look at the 
instructions regarding film reflections. Uh, okay, next is uh, supplemental lectures. Uh, so this is probably, uh, these are not difficult and, and I'm surprised at how complicated some people can make them. These are not designed to be difficult at all. In fact, they're, they're, they're much simpler to um, uh, complete than a, than a research paper or anything like that. I'm not, we're not doing that. Uh, so what a supplemental lecture is, um, well, for, there's eight before the midterm, eight before the final. So you'll have eight to study for for your midterm, eight for the final. When you get the exams, I'm gonna reduce that to six. Okay, I'm gonna take two away, I'm not gonna tell you which ones. You then choose three to write about. So I don't wanna get into a whole explanation. Again, go to modules, week one, assignment instructions, what is a supplemental lecture? and anything else associated with that a video tutorial and written instructions. But essentially a supplemental lecture is a separate lecture from the book. N not to suggest that I'm not gonna talk about something that's in the book, but I'm gonna talk to you about a subject that's coming from me and how I put it together. And you're not gonna find that in the book. You're not gonna find it on the internet because I haven't posted these on the internet. Uh, so essentially, what I want you to do, what will happen in the middle of a lecture, we're in the middle of a, of a lecture going along about chapter 15, whatever it is, and then I'll say, okay, at this point, we're going to do a supplemental lecture, and I will give you an outline and the whole thing. Please look at the instructions for all those details. So essentially, what you're going to do is keep these separate from, from, your, from your chapter notes and take copious notes um, and write down everything I say, because what you're going to be doing is a review, okay? You're going to review what I said. You're not going to take the subject and go to Google and cut and paste a bunch of stuff. That's People do that because they don't read the instructions. Please read the instructions about supplemental lectures carefully because people tend to derail here. And, and again, um, I, I if I thought it was because the, the assignment was complicated, I, I'd change it. But 90% or, or, or so, I don't know the exact numbers, but, but the vast majority of people do, do just fine because they take the time to, to read. If you're just going to not, if you're not going to listen to these videos, you're not going to read the instructions. When these come up, you're not going to know what they are. You're going to cut and paste a bunch of information that I didn't say. And you're going to get, um, you know, uh, very, very low points. So I, I, I'll make the analogy. And you'll hear this in different videos also, but it's it's the best way I can explain to you what these are. They're they're you're going to I'm going to give you a presentation. Uh, you're going to review it, okay? Why do I do reviews? Because many times you'll be asked to do that in a job, or you might review software for for your company. You come back and you present to your to your department. You, you, you want to tell them everything the presenter said. You're not going to add stuff that, that you thought would be nice to add. You're not going to do that. So the analogy I use is just, just real quickly here, and I'm, I apologize. You're going to hear this four or five times before this class is over, but I feel like I have to be clear here because this is where people tend to stumble. Uh, this is a make-believe story. You and your friend have a have a hobby, and you're obsessed with this hobby, and you learn that the that the absolute expert in your hobby is going to come into your town to give a presentation. You and your friend are very excited. You get tickets. You can't wait to go to hear what this presenter has to say. But the day of the presentation, your friend gets very sick, has to stay home. Your friend asks you, please write down everything that the presenter says. Great detail, copious notes. Don't leave out anything. I want to know everything he said. And you, as, as a good friend, you do your due diligence and you do that and you come back with all these pages of notes, okay? You, you then wouldn't go on the internet and add a bunch of stuff to try to impress your friend because that's not what your friend asked. Your friend said, tell me what the man, what the man or woman said. That's what I'm saying. Yes, there are, there are lots of places to go to find more information about these subjects, but if I didn't say it, then don't put it in there. Because if you put something in, in that I didn't say, you're getting it from an outside source. The, the instructions for supplemental lectures will clearly state the only place to get your information to write this is from the supplemental lecture notes, which you can use for your midterm and final. So these are all 
th this is a simple um, you know, assignment that, that somehow has gotten a little complicated. So please be sure you read the instructions in modules week one. If you have any questions about what they are, I'd be happy to talk to you about that. Next is the California state requirement. So again, there'll, there'll be copious instructions about what this is uh, when the time comes. Uh, this is just one class. And in, 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 in our case, it's just one out of four classes in our week. The state of California requires me as an instructor of this class, History 110, the second half of, of American history, to teach one class on the government and constitution of California, and that I have a, an assignment uh, associated with that. So what I'm what I do is I do a a brief lecture. It, it's well, it's it's 40, 50 minutes long uh, about the state of California, the Constitution, the history of the Constitution, on and on. And then I ask you, uh, it, it, then that there'll be a quiz that you'll have a couple days to do. Uh, you simply go to Canvas and go to the quiz, uh, Canvas assignments to the California State Requirement quiz. You take you take that quiz. The, the quiz is not designed to overly challenge you. If if you are paying attention, uh, you could you could probably answer all the questions without taking a note. But you, but you might take a a couple notes here and there to make sure that you got it covered. Okay. Okay. So that that doesn't make us happy as instructors. We we kind of lose you know our 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 momentum because we're talking about something entirely different. Now we got to go to California, but it's required by the state. Okay, two exams, one at midterm, one at final, each of the same, 40 multiple choice, uh, 40 minutes, three essay questions, part two, 75 minutes. And again, your three essay questions will be from the supplemental lectures as described above. The final exam is not comprehensive of the entire course. So once you finish the midterm, it's all behind you. You move forward with the second half only, okay? Uh, grading, there's 570 possible points. Um, weekly definitions, 10 points per chapter is is 100. Uh, that should say uh, 17, sorry. Uh, it's 17 definitions, not 15. 170 points, okay. Uh, film reflections are 25 points each for 100 points. The California State Requirement Quiz is one time at 25 points. The two exams, uh, 120 for the midterm, the final ramps up a little bit. And, and that's a good thing for people that are behind in points. You, you're going to gain some points here if you put the effort in. 155 points. I, I grade on a typical uh, st percentage uh, style. I don't curve grades. I just don't really, I don't do that, okay? Uh, please look at your points and grades in the grade section of Canvas. It's your responsibility to check it. They're, there, it's easy to make a mistake in Canvas. Uh, I do the best I can, and other instructors do the same thing. We all realize that it's, it's it can be a little glitchy sometimes. Sometimes you'll enter a grade for somebody, it'll jump and delete somebody else's. It doesn't happen all the time, but on occasion, I watch it very closely. But once in a while, it gets through. So, or perhaps I just missed it, and and for some reason, I didn't I didn't submit that grade for that specific assignment. So, so always look at your grades. If something's missing or it's a zero and you don't think that you deserve a zero, let me know. If you see a zero for, for a an assignment that you turned in, there's been a mistake made. So don't don't get at me. Why'd you give me a zero? It's 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 a mistake. I, I, I don't give anybody a zero if they turn something in, okay? Um, the only time you get a zero is if you don't do anything. You don't take the class, you don't take the test, you don't submit the exam or or I'm sorry, the assignment, the film reflection, the definition, you'll get a zero if you don't submit. If you submit something, I'll give you something, okay? So if you see a zero and you did something, don't don't freak out. It's okay. Just just take a breath and just, just uh, professor, I'm sorry, but I don't have my grade showing zero for chapter 10, and I will respond to you. Yep, you're right, bro. I, I, I gave you 10 points. No worries, okay? Okay, uh, extra credit, late work. I do not accept extra credit or late work. And I only can say this because in the past when I did it, it's just a nightmare. I've got enough challenges with the hundreds of students that I have in a compressed schedule. I can't, I can't manage extra credit and late work. So how I offset that is I, these assignments are available for, for extended periods of time, okay? A typical definition assignment is available 10 days before they are due. They they uh, they post on Friday at midnight 
you have that weekend, the whole week, and the following weekend. So a whole week, two weekends to do a simple uh, definition list, okay? Uh, so that should be plenty of time. Now understand that the last chapter, again, because of our compressed schedule, the last chapter in this class, 31, is only available for three days because it's the end of the class and I can't extend it past there. But by the end of this class, that this will be your 17th definition assignment. You'll you'll be you know you'll see how quickly and easily you can do these. Three days is plenty of time to 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 do one definition assignment. But that's the only time. The rest are available for 10 full days. Film reflections are available for 11 days before they are due. But again, we do have one exception. Film reflection number one that has, is posted now is only available for seven days. So instead of posting, I already mentioned this, but instead of posting on Friday, it's posting on Monday because I can't post something before the class starts. So with the exception of that, film, film one, you only have seven full days. More than enough time to watch a simple film and write a simple two-page paper. All the rest, the other three reflection papers all have 11 days. So from my from my perspective, there's no excuse to not finish the assignment in that given time. A full week plus two weekends and a, and a, and a Friday uh, in, in, the, uh, in the case of the film reflections the following Mondays also. So my suggestion always, start early and finish early to avoid any last minute issue in the due date. Nine out of 10 problems I have with students in their grades is that, is that they're, they got 10 minutes left and something happens. And oh my gosh, I didn't know what to do. And I, I was ready to go. And you know I, I, I couldn't do this. And I, I mean, that's, I understand if you wait to the last minute, if something happens, you're in trouble. If you do it on Wednesday and it's due on Monday, you can have all the troubles in the world on Wednesday. You just can say, I'll do it tomorrow. And, and, and there you go. So it's a tough thing to learn, and, and I got to say, I, I didn't do it when I was a young student, but you learn as you get older. Age is the price of wisdom, trust me. Uh, you know, if you have if you have tasks to do, uh, whatever they are, whether school, work, home, family, whatever they are, if you've got, if you got 11 things to do, okay, uh, do the hard ones first. Get the big ones out of the way first, because then you kind of, you kind of glide through the rest. If you do all the easy ones first, and you got this big, you know, big challenge at the end. So do do the do the hard things first, and then and then scale down to the easy things, and do them ahead of time. Give yourself a buffer so you can any any last minute issues that you have, you don't have to worry about. Okay, but understand, I'm. It, uh, I realize that it happens. I realize that many of you are working. I realize many of you are doing childcare that you're not, you know, uh, used to doing because you because because of, of the COVID virus. I, I understand the environment's different, um, so that that's even more of a reason to do things early. But if you do have a situation, you're running out of time, your assignment's done, and Canvas is down. It, it, it happens. Okay, Canvas is down. Please just email me, whatever it might be. I don't care if it's your final exam, essays, definitions, film reflections, whatever it is. Email to me uh, to to beat the deadline, okay? Um, because I mean, there's a deadline for a reason. You know, nine out of ten people are going to work really hard to, to to meet that deadline. That tenth person that waits to the last minute then has a problem, wants me to give them a break. Well, how do I justify that to the nine people? Uh, that that did it the right way and pushed themselves and struggled to get it done. So I'm 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 pretty much zero tolerance on this. I I don't accept late work. If you don't get it in, you 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 missed out on those points. Okay. Um, you know people say, well, I didn't realize it was due. I I showed you four ways to know. It, it's it's it your to do list is screaming at you. So if you don't go on Canvas and look at what's going on. You're gonna have a problem, okay? So, so, so be aware, gain some skills. That, that's that. Those are good student skills that are really great to learn early in your college career. And again, I've been on both sides, so I, I can tell you from personal experience, the, the, the other, the way I'm talking about works a whole lot better than just you know not paying attention and waiting the last minute. Okay, conflict, conflict resolution. Um, if you feel there's a problem with your grades or any other matter in this class in, in regards to me, okay, so if you feel like I'm not treating you fairly, 
I didn't grade this assignment fairly or I didn't make it clear or whatever it might be. Okay. I mean, these things happen, conflicts happen. It's not a big deal. Um, I got to be honest, I don't have very many of them, but on occasion. So there is a chain of command. So if you were in the military, you, you know what I mean. Like you, you, you don't go to the commanding officer of, of your unit because the toilet's backed up, right? Chain of command. Same here. If you have a problem, talk to me first. Uh, and I can tell you that um, anytime there is a problem, this is where it stops for me, at least so far. I've never had anybody go to number two or three. But this is how it works if that, if that was to happen. Talk to me first to attempt to remedy the issue. We can't do that. I will give you the contact information of the department chair. They then will talk to you and you try to remedy the problem. If they can't do it, then you go to the dean of the department and then the dean comes in. Okay, so that's the chain of command. Uh, don't start with the dean. Uh, he'll just kick you back. So um, understand that. Okay, chain of command. Uh, academic honesty, plagiarism, that, that word plagiarism is misspelled right there. The, the correct way to spell it is right here in the red, okay? Uh, so what is plagiarism? On, well, you know, honesty is pretty obvious. It's expected that you'll be honest and ethical at all times as you pursue your academic goals. Uh, Miramar College students are bound by the student code of conduct, and you can find that uh, online. Uh, in this course, cheating, plagiarism, and I'll talk about plagiarism in a minute, disruptions of instructional activity, fraud, and or lying will result in a minimum of a grade of zero for the assignment that we're talking about with no makeup permitted. So if, 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 it's, if you're caught cheating on a film reflection, you're, you're, you're going to get a, you know, a, a zero, zero points without the chance of making it up. Uh, doesn't mean you're out of the class, doesn't mean that you can't do better from that point on, but that assignment, okay? But understand, if, 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 it's, if it's very serious, uh, you could, it, it could lead to an F in the entire course, as well as formal disciplinary action by the Dean of Student Affairs, as described in the code, uh, in this, it's published in the catalog. Uh, so it's your responsibility to maintain academic integrity in all your coursework. So people ask, you know, what is plagiarism? And I, I know you hear it a lot. Everyone says, oh yeah, we can't do that. But I don't think, I'm not sure if, if everyone truly knows what it means. So so the, the true definition of plagiarism is using somebody else's work and, and not citing them, not, not giving them the credit for being the person that found it. So of course, if you're doing a research paper with, or you're citing and doing footnotes, you know, anytime you use, uh, you know, a portion of your of your paper, you put a footnote, number one, you, you go to the bottom of the page and and there's the author in the book where you got that information. OK, so if you if you don't if you don't cite that person, that's plagiarizing. You're you're taking this this someone's work and, and claiming that you, it's your own. But that's not where plagiarism can can get a student. OK. Um, it's still plagiarism, but in a different way. So, for example, uh, supplemental lectures. And I've mentioned to you that they're reviews. But like I said, some people don't pay attention and they haven't done their due diligence. They haven't listened to the instructions. So they uh, they come across the part two and they go, oh, my gosh. Uh, well, here's I got to pick three subjects. I'm going to go on Google and I'll just cut and paste. So you cut and paste stuff and boom, and you submit that. And you're not saying where you got it because you don't want me to know, obviously. Uh, but that's plagiarism. You're using somebody's work and saying that it's your own. It's also cheating. It's also uh, prohibited in the instructions of the supplemental lecture. The Internet's um, prohibited. And people say, well, come on, you, you can't you can't know if I'm on the Internet. You're not here to see me. It's an online class. Well, no, you're right. I don't have to because I can tell when people have gotten information from another source because they're telling me things that I didn't say in the lecture. The the lectures, the supplemental lectures are 15, 20 minutes long, 10, 15, 20 minutes long. Um, there's a there's books written about these these subjects. So I'm not getting it all in there. So if I start hearing about people and dates and times and acts that I didn't say we got the information from someplace else. And people will say, no, I mean, it's it's very obvious. But uh, but also Unicheck is part of Canvas. Unicheck is a, a system that will scan um, submissions and find 
where on the internet you got it. So not only do I do I know that you got it from the internet, I can tell you what website you got it from and show it to you. So understand modern technology, it, you know, is is here and doing that kind of thing, it's it's more difficult to to get away with. So understand plagiarism. Uh, you don't want to be, you know, copying and pasting from websites and and you know rearranging it a little bit to make it look like your own. Okay, don't do that. Uh, please, further clarification, refer to the college catalog and the and the policy on academic honesty. Okay, ac uh, academic accommodations. Uh, students with disabilities who require accommodations must be approved for services by the Office of Disabled Student Services, the SPS. Not by me. So if you have a need for an accommodation, don't email me and say, this is my issue. Can I have a note taker? Can I get extra time? I don't make that decision. DSPS does. You have to contact them first. If you want accommodations, you have to contact them first. And then once they authorize you to receive accommodations and they send me a document that says that you've been approved and what the accommodations are, so please do this early in the semester so we can get it implemented as soon as possible, okay? Um, and of course, um, I'm not sure if the evacuation assistance is really for a face-to-face -face class, but uh, more information about DSBS, that's their website. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's the class, the room number on, on campus, okay? Okay. Uh, so one more time about dropping the class. I'm repeating myself to be clear. Again, it's your responsibility to drop this class before the drop deadlines if you're unable to finish the course. A grade will be assigned to every student who remains on the class roster after the drop deadline. Don't make that mistake. You don't, you don't have to tell me why. Just drop the class. Do it before those two dates so you don't get the F, D, or C, okay? Okay, and lastly, a commentary, and this is my chance to get on a soapbox and and be somewhat parental. I'm, I know you're all dying for that. Okay, so the question is inevitably asked, usually every semester, how much of your lecture or presentation is actually on an exam? So let me think about that. There's eight weeks in this class. If you take out the days used for the midterm and final, that is reduced to, let's say, seven weeks. We have six hours of instruction per week in a fast track course. That's 42 hours of instruction. You're going to be getting 42 hours of instruction from me. Lucky you. <laughs> uh, the midterm and final will amount to three hours of our time, maybe a little bit more in the whole class. So how do I fit 42 hours into three hours? I can't. It doesn't work that way. So it becomes obvious that getting everything I say to you into an exam is impossible. But students ask me, well, what you are about to talk to beyond an exam? And I mean, I don't know how to answer that question. It's a difficult question to answer. It, it's, it's fairly obvious that much of what I say will not be on an exam. 42 hours into three hours, okay? <clears throat> so from my perspective, <clears throat> and again, age is the price of wisdom. I went this the hard way. From my perspective, the best approach for students is to take it all in, learn all you can, be diligent, put it the effort in, be prepared, have, have your laptop or your notebook ready, take notes, ask questions, okay? Take it all in, learn all you can. If you approach it that way, you, you won't have to worry about the exam or what's on it because you'll know all there is to know. That's the point. <clears throat> Uh, this course is designed by me to teach you the story of the United States of America, in this case, the second half of it. The best approach for you to take is to learn it well. It will help you discover that many of the issues and conflicts we have today have their beginnings in the past. History is an extremely relevant subject regarding the present. And we're going to talk about reconstruction in the Jim Crow South first and, and setting the stage for racial strife that we have on our streets today. You know, literally as we speak, uh, history is very relevant uh, and not everyone, you know, uh, understands or agrees with that. I'll, I'll try to make that clear to you that this is an important subject for you to learn. So the best approach to your education is not to figure out an easy way, look for shortcuts, but to embrace it, let it do its magic. This idea that C gets the degree, 
Well, that, that'll get you a degree. It won't get you into grad school. Okay, grad school is where a lot of you are heading, whether you believe it or not. You don't know it right now, but you'll be inspired to. It's what happened to me. And you can't get into grad school with C's, okay? You, you need to have A's and B's. Um, so it, it, it's only going to help you to, to, to work hard to, to, to get the best grades you can. Uh, the problem with C gets the degree, and, and maybe it'll happen. And I'm sure it's happened. I mean, I'm sure people have skated through and got a degree. But when it comes time to go interview for that, that cush job that you always wanted, now I got my fat degree with me, and there's five people that are going to interview against you. If those five people did their due diligence and put in their time and learned, they're going to have a rounded education. That's what an education is for. Education is not to get you a job or career. It's to, it's to give you a rounded education to show employers that you've done this. You've, you've, you've gone through a rigorous course of study for four years. You've taken all these classes. You've juggled, you know, uh, work and school and, and girlfriends, boyfriends, wives, husbands, whatever, children, whatever it might be, you've led a life and managed to get a college degree. It says a lot about who you are, okay? Uh, so do it that way. Don't don't be the person that just, that just skates by because when that interview comes and those five people are, are ahead of you, they're, they're going to shine and you won't because you didn't get that rounded education because you took the shortcut the easy way. So even though you get the degree, it'll still come back to it'll come back to to bite you. So don't do that. The combination of all your classes together is designed to enlighten you and remove any blinders you may be wearing regarding life. So I'm not trying to get accusatory or or um, you know insult anybody. I don't mean that at all. But in, in, education tends to broaden your scope because you learn about. A lot of different things, math, science, history, anthropology, uh, film, whatever it might be, you get a rounded education and, and you'll see how it all kind of is interwoven together and there's there's great benefit from it. Okay, so uh, when I say blinders that you may be wearing, I'm trying to be clear that I'm not suggesting that you are, but many times people have uh, a narrow scope, somewhat tunnel vision. They're used to their life the way that it is. They don't want to hear about anything beyond it. Education opens you up and that frees you from that and opens you up to the to the possibilities of the world. And it'll it's humbling. You'll you realize that you're just a small part of this. That you, maybe you're not as important as you think. Again, not an insult. Um, if you allow this to happen and work as hard as you can, I can assure you that the benefits gain will be invaluable and priceless for the rest of your life. I'm living proof. Essentially, high school's adult training. It teaches us the very basics so one can maneuver through society without any obstacles. We know that we need to get a job and that we need to pay our taxes and we need to pay our rent. And, you know, we, we can vote and there's a president, and there's a constitution, all those things high school will teach you. College will take you to a higher level, will teach you the to handle the complexities of life and allow you to pursue careers that require higher knowledge. This re will result in living a life that's full, challenging, and rewarding. But most importantly, it will result in a life that is satisfying, the key ingredient to happiness. And again, I'm living proof of that also. I, I've owned three businesses in my lifetime. And I was, and I did very well in all three, but I was always a fish out of water. I'm not really a born businessman. I, I did okay. I got through it. I did well, but this is what I always wanted to do. Whether that, whether you understand that or not, like, why would you want to do that? Everyone's got their own, uh, you know, um, uh, interest. This is mine, and I love teaching it. So I, I've, I've lived this, and you, you can make a ton of money, and I have in businesses. But if you're not if you're not happy and satisfied, satisfied is the key. If you're not satisfied with what your life is, <clears throat> there goes my voice again. <clears throat> doesn't matter how much money you have, you're not going to be truly fulfilled. Okay. And lastly, if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. Okay. Okay. That is the end of uh, this tutorial. Thank you.